Have you ever encountered the phenomenon of empty towns? Specifically, driving into a town or a place one would expect to find a large amount of humans only to find none at all. I had this happen a few years ago when I went with family to Hawthorne, Nevada. It was a Saturday afternoon and the town had a population of 3,000 people, which is small, but surely one would see a single person. We were looking for restrooms, the McDonald's was closed, the stores were closed, the casino was closed, the hotels were closed. We settled on using public restrooms in a park we had found. The women's restroom had shit smeared everywhere, even the doorknob on the other side. It was absolutely disgusting, and I'm glad nobody touched it. The men's room was a good bit better, but still very unclean, but we all used it. After we finished, we returned to the car. Music started playing from the speakers around town, and we gunned it all the way out of there and didn't slow down for 20 miles. There weren't even any other cars on the road. It's like the entire town decided to play a prank on us. What happened? Also, the town is completely surrounded by military bunkers, storehouses, and minefields, if that helps. Not a soldier in sight. I actually had a similar experience. First year of college, I was going to a local community college, so I stayed in my hometown. One day I'm bored as usual, driving around killing time with three friends. I see a road and I think, oh, never been that way before. None of my friends had either. So we head that way. It's probably 11 p.m., so it's dark out. We eventually come to a town. Now, there's a lot of small farming communities around here, but we hadn't heard of this one. Munchi is the name, population 1,100. My first thought is, well, that's a lot of people for me to have never heard of them before, and it's less than 20 miles from my hometown. I roll into town, and the first thing I see is a cemetery made of a very large, beautiful church. Past the police and the fire station, I'm in a public basketball court. We get to a four-way intersection, which seems to be the middle of town, and you just stop there and talk about how this town could have possibly been unknown to us. Three of the four of us have lived in this area our entire lives, and the fourth has been here almost ten years. At this point, we notice that there are no lights on anywhere. You know, the street lights are off. Then we notice that we haven't seen a car either on the road or parked in the town. It was like the whole town had been evacuated. Not one house had a light on or a car outside. On the main row, we passed 40 or 50 houses and we could see down the side roads because the moon was fairly bright that night. Not one single person. We leave the town and we vow to come back the next day. The next day, we go back and our jaws drop. There are cars everywhere. Almost every driveway had one. Probably 20 kids playing basketball, multiple courts. People are mowing lawns. There are city workers painting the curbs, women jogging. We couldn't believe our eyes. There was more happening than there was in our hometown. Why have I not heard of Munchie before? I asked my other friends. None of them had ever heard of it. We never went back. Something about it creeped me out. Even when there was people there. The town had a school and a football field. Our town had 2,100 people, and we were in the same conference as every other school in the area, but with less than 5,000 in their town. We played schools that are farther away and even in the same direction. One town, Homer, was 35 miles away from my town in the same direction. So Munchie would have been between us and Homer. For them to have a football team and us to not know about it is ridiculous. The only possible way it works is if they scrimmage themselves and they never actually play a game. I live in Wainwright, and sometime in July in 2012, I woke up around noon and my roomie wasn't there. This wasn't the weirdest thing, because he played soccer a lot. I got on my bike and was going to 7-Eleven, which is 24 hours, and I didn't see anyone at all, and I found this a little weird, but I just dismissed it. Then I got to the 7-Eleven, and the doors were unlocked, but literally no one was there. I went to the counter to buy some smokes, and I rang the bell, but no one came. I just grabbed a pack and walked out the door. Now I was getting a little freaked. There was literally no one anywhere. I went to my buddy's house and his door was unlocked, so I went into his room and he was nowhere in the house. I decided to ask his neighbors, but none of them were home either. I was really worried at this point, so I went home. I tried calling the operator in Walmart, but no one was answering. I tried Googling stuff, but apparently our internet was down. I figured I was dreaming at this point, and I decided to make myself wake up. 
I grabbed some sleeping pills out of the cabinet and sat down on the couch and fell asleep. Then I woke up on the couch and dismissed it as a dream. An hour later, my roomie came home and asked me if I had any cigs. I said no, figuring the 7-Eleven trip was a dream. I told him I was going to 7-Eleven to pick some up, and when I put on my jacket, I found the cigs in my pocket. Still don't understand to this day. Are you familiar with Peace Village, a town on North Korea's southern border? It's a fake town with working electricity and everything, created for propaganda purposes to make North Korea look better than South Korea. But when you get close to it, you'll notice that there's bits and pieces missing, and nobody actually lives in it. There are many buildings in America which exist only as facades. Next time you're driving through the sticks, take a closer look at some of the buildings that you see out in the middle of nowhere. Many of them are just facades with empty interiors. You'll even notice that some have painted windows and other features. There are various reasons that they were constructed. Some were constructed as a border. Fake cities, ghost towns, and ghost cities appearing in the middle of nowhere with the vanishing. I used to drive through a road on California called Laporte Road. Many times they have small ghost towns that just pop up as you drive through them. But they're not there on the way back. People in small towns of maybe a hundred or so just vanish along with properties that seemed to be well uptook, but no one was ever there. Not even gardeners. Strange stuff. Kern County in California has quite a few fake towns. However, the story for these is rather boring. The water in these towns is terribly contaminated from mining and runoff, so they'll build well pumps and then build fake houses around them that look real from the roads and highways, but if you get close, you'll see that they have virtually no yards, no garages, or driveways. They might have windows, but they'll be blacked out or even just plastic panes mounted on brick. Little to no people there, like maintenance people in a few model homes that do nothing but just make sure none of the pumps fail. Not far away, in downtown and northern parts of San Bernardino, you'll see the exact same thing, just nicer. You'll be driving down the streets in the city, suddenly you'll see a house on a huge lot with cinder block walls and high iron gates. The houses will look real with all the basic parts, but it'll look off. No real front lawn and no personality to the house. If you get close to the houses, you'll notice security cameras and hear the pumps running inside. The neighbors will often tell you that the houses are fake and that they only ever see city employees going in and out and city maintenance trucks doing the basic landscaping. Sadly, the newest wells don't even do this. Most will just be a concrete shack with rumbling pipes going in and out, and city signage will tell you exactly what it is. They don't even bother trying to hide it like they used to. The on-paper reason is that it's not needed anymore, because people can understand that they need a well pump in the neighborhood to flush spring water into the gutters, or contaminated water into a sewer line, and so on. The real reason, however, is that there is a perceived loss of value in living around a pump or a grid junction station, etc. So they simply don't build houses near them anymore. And since the land is already owned by the city or by utilities, it just ends up being used for other public purposes, like a park or an office building. I think I found a fake town last year, like Truman Show fake. Last summer, I was cross-country road tripping it, hitting up some national parks, and around central and southern Utah. It was getting late, like 10 p.m. I've been driving since about 6-ish. Dark, no moon, can only see for my headlights. So I decided to find some place to rest for the night at the next exit. I see a town off in the distance, and so I turn off, and the pull-off that I've seen for over an hour heading towards town. The pull-off is unmarked and unlit, not on my GPS, no cell service. The town is directly ahead, though, so I keep going. The road immediately turns into a dirt road, and it's about five miles until it turns to pavement again, right at the town where businesses and houses started showing up. Immediately, the town strikes me as weird. Nobody is on the streets. No cars. On the streets are in the business parking lots. Jazz music is being pumped through the streets for some reason. Not loudly, but loud enough to hear. This town would look to be about seven blocks wide from some miles out has every major fast food chain that I've heard of and seven hotels on the main street. Still no cell service. Still not on the car GPS. I go to get food. The KFC was fully illuminated. Unlocked. Nobody there. Same thing with a jack-in-the-box. McDonald's has a cashier and a cook when I get there and they both look 
annoyed. I take my order. Give me distinctly non-McDonald's nuggets and fries. I leave. Try to find a bed for the night. Hampton Inn. Empty parking lot. Third annoyed looking person informs me that they're all booked out. I go to a La Quinta. The person I'm now convinced was the cook at the McDonald's is behind the check-in counter. Also an empty parking lot. Also fully booked. Holiday Inn Express. Empty parking lot. Person that was clearly the fucking cashier at McDonald's is behind the check-in counter. Surprisingly, they have rooms. I ask him if he's the guy from McDonald's. He says, oh, no, that's uh, my brother. Good enough for me. I get a room. Wi-Fi, but nothing loads. Take a shower and I crash. I wake up the next day. No breakfast in the lobby. No other guests. The McDonald's guy is still there for the checkout. I ask him how to get out of town. Same road you came in on. I head back to the McDonald's to get something to eat. Town is still playing smooth jazz. Still nobody on the street. Go to the drive-thru. Drive-thru lady is definitely the lady from the Hampton Inn. I order a McGriddle and a black coffee, and she hands me a microwave English muffin sandwich and what I assume is some kind of instant coffee. Place is too weird to stay and argue. So I head down the only road in and out of town. Maybe three miles onto the dirt road. I start noticing a big metal wire fence on both sides of the road of the desert. They sort of meet on the road at a big motorized gate that's open. As soon as I pass through, the gate starts closing. I get back onto the road, finally got onto 62. Well, that's not right. I could have sworn I was on 89 when I decided to pull off and there's mountains in between. Finally get cell service. Nothing matches the description of the town. None of the charges ever show up on my credit card. 